Love is a gift. It cannot be acquired nor cultivated. It can never be attained by making efforts. If it is there, it is there. If it's not there, it's not there. That's it. But then, what is the point of talking about Bhakti Yoga? Yes. You can create condition for it to blossom, for it to manifest. It's like opening your windows. By opening your windows, sunlight is not going to come in. Just by opening your windows. Sunlight comes when it comes. But even when it comes, if you keep your windows shut, you are deprived of sunlight. So your job is to keep the windows open when the sunlight comes, so that sunlight enters in your home. In the same way, though bhakti is inherent in you for it to manifest, you can create some conditions. And there is no guarantee, just by your condition, bhakti is going to come. Or without any condition, bhakti may just dawn on you. One day you are just walking, you suddenly feel so connected, so much love just comes out of you like a spring. And sometimes you sit in a temple, you do puja, you, do, you sing with all your energy, sing for three hours, four hours, a kind of kirtan, all night people sing, you may still not experience anything. These days, those akhanda kirtans, in, you know, the jagarna, in the night, all night people singing has also become sort of a profession. It's like a tea party. So then what, what is the way? What obstructs the love to manifest is limited, constrained intellect. Innocent people express it very naturally because the barriers are not there. But in an intellectual person, the mind comes up and says, this or that, puts forth many judgments, starts doubting one's own experience. You know, a simple ton does not doubt his or her own experience. But an intellectual does doubt it. Now, then does bhakti contradict intellect? Is it opposing the intellect? Lord Krishna says, no. It is not. A mature intellect brings forth the devotion. And the link for that is all. A mature intellect always is in awe of creation. When there is something unfathomable, something so vast, something that is uncomprehendable, there the intellect gives up saying, wow. And in that moment, Something happens, and that something is what everyone is looking for all their life, and that is devotion, that is bhakti. So, Lord Krishna gives many ideas to Arjuna. A warrior is in doership, and that is necessary at that moment. He cannot say, I am not the doer. Warrior had to work. And so, Lord Krishna is saying, put your mind in me, put your intellect in me. 
He did not say, your intellect is rubbish, throw it out. He says, fill it with me. Be connected with me. Mayarpita mano buddhi yomad bhakta samet. Me is what? Me is the infinite consciousness, the vastness of existence. I am vastness of existence. I am not a body, but I am the consciousness, scintillating consciousness. When your intellect is immersed in scintillating consciousness, when your mind takes rest in the ocean of consciousness, in the vastness of consciousness, then and only then you can experience the truth, the reality. And for that he says, Shraddha. The word Shraddha is translated as faith. It's not, justice is not done to the word Shraddha by translating it into faith. Shraddha is something more than faith. Shraddha means loving or attending or accepting something which is beyond the purview of knowing, beyond the purview of what you already know. Accepting there is something beyond what I know and liking it, adoring it is Shraddha. You know, what we know, we like or we dislike. And that's where our world remains. So, that there is no growth then. There is, you can't acquire any more knowledge. But if you are willing to know beyond what you know, you are willing to look beyond what you already are familiar with, then the vast... Wealth of knowledge is open to you. And that process of acquiring knowledge is called Shraddha. That's a Shraddhavan Labate Gyan. One who has Shraddha. In simple terms, sometimes people translate this and say, one who has an open mind, one is open to new ideas. One is ready to listen. You know, often we don't listen beyond what we know. We see everything within our own conceptual mind. We don't take a leap outside the orbit of our conscious knowing mind. So, this leap outside our intellect, our informations that we already possess, is what is called Shraddha. You know, when a yajna is happening, um, they are sitting, some people who know it, they are doing something. Others, they don't know anything, but they sit there with the feeling that something good is coming out of Some positive ions are happening here. When that openness, you experience that positive ions moving. You feel that your mind is changing, your emotions are getting softened. A surge of energy moving through you. All these experiences come when you have that Shraddha or, or faith of the unknown dimension. Atachittam samadhatum Nashaknoshi maistiram Abhyasa yoga natato mamichaptum danunjayah.
ಅಭ್ಯಸಮರ್ಥೋಸಿ ಮತ್ಕರ್ಮಪರಮೋ ಭವ ಮದರ್ಥಮಿ ಕರ್ಮಿ ಕುರ್ವನ್ ಸಿದ್ಧಿ ಮಾಪ್ಸಿ ವಿಲ್ ಟೇಕ್ ಇಟ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಎಸ್ಟ ಡೇಸ್ ಮಯ್ಯೇವ ಮನಾದಸ್ವ ಮಯಿ ಬುದ್ಧಿ ನಿವೇಶಯ ನಿವಸಿಷ್ಯಸಿ ಮಯ್ಯೇವ ಅತ ಊರ್ಧ್ವ ನ ಸಂಶಯ ಯುವರ್ ಮೈಂಡ್ ವೇವರ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ ಓವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಗೋಸ್ ಹಿಯರ್ ದೇರ್ 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 ಇಟ್ ಡಸಂಟ್ ಸ್ಟೇ ಇನ್ ಒನ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಯು ಫೈಂಡ್ ಸಮಥಿಂಗ್ ಚಾರ್ಮಿಂಗ್ and the charm lasts only for a few minutes few seconds maybe few days then it jumps on to something else which is even more charming appears to be more charming the nature of mind is to go towards more charming ones whatever it is if there is beautiful music and suddenly some good food comes your mind leaves the music goes to food of all the five senses touch taste smell sight sound the mind keeps wandering and it goes moves from one to another because it cannot stay in one place and really get satisfaction there you know in in india in hindu temples why they decorate the deity and put everything there you know they all five senses they try to put it there you know something for the music and the fragrance and food displayed there and nice jewelries what is the purpose because the ancient people knew how your mind wanders like people go for uh, window shopping you know they just go and look at the shops even they they may not have any money in the purse ladies especially <laughs> if you have nothing to do let's go to the market nearly 60% of the people who wander in markets are just visitors forty percent of people only buy things except in on like christmas or diwali or eid some big festivals other times when people walk around they just moving around satisfying their eyes giving some feast to their eyes coming back like that so in the previous chapter lord krishna said wherever whatever nice things you see it is all me only raso ham apsu kaunteya prabhas mi shashi shore i am the beautiful light from sun and moon i am the taste i am the beauty in the beautiful i am the strength in the strong so wherever the mind is attracted lord krishna comes and stands there hey look this is me here i am here come on keep your attention on me don't get lost in this thing if you are appreciating a flower you should be reminded of me not just get lost in the flower if you are appreciating a music then see beyond the music it is me who is standing there the essence of all music lord krishna is a great psychologist he knows the mind like nobody else so he arrested tendency of arjuna wherever arjuna's mind might go he put to stop there it's me there i am so when saint used to say 
the flower, you are appreciating flower, then the flower feels very sad because it says, hey, you are forgetting the creator of me. You are not seeing the one who is the beauty behind my beauty. So the flower feeling sad that you are not recognizing the consciousness that is behind that. It is the presence of consciousness which made the the seed sprout, become a plant and then the plant bear the flower. And you are only appreciating the flower. Similarly, all the thing that you got in your life is because of that universal spirit and you forget the universal spirit. If these objects do not remind you of the universal spirit, then they feel sorry that their purpose is not achieved. That their goal, their goal is to remind you that the spirit, universal spirit, the divinity is so beautiful. So he says, Mayeva mana adaswa. You put your mind in me. I have already shown you. I am the the summum bonum of a creation. I am behind all that you like and you appreciate. Now just give a little more lift. See, see me there and keep your mind in me. Then your attraction for those things will simply wither away the very same moment. My buddhim niveshaya. Mind is all the attraction, but buddhi, the intellect, it calculates. Intellect has a different trip of its own. Judges. Intellect is that faculty we judges, right or wrong. I want it, I don't want it. The comparison is not from the mind. Comparison is always from the intellect. Judgments, comparisons, and affirmation as well is from intellect. Certainty is from intellect, so also the doubt. If you're sure of something, it is because of intellect. If you're doubting something, it is because of the intellect. And keep that intellect also in me. Know that I am bigger than the intellect. Intellect is just a wave and I am the ocean. Intellect is just that cube of ice floating in the cup of the drink. And that intellect is part of the water, of the fluid, of the liquid that you are having. So, mayeva mana adasva, may buddhim niveshaya. If you do this, if you put your mind and heart in me, definitely you will rise up. Nivashisya si mayeva atha urdhvam na samshaya. I am telling you, without doubt, you will rise up. Then atha chittam samadhato nashak dosi mai stiram. Your consciousness without any doubt, again he's saying, you know, you have to reassure many times. And Lord Krishna is giving that assurance. The job of a guru is to assure, hey, don't worry, I am here. One who knows will always assure. Because he knows for sure. And what is the, what the point of that guru doesn't give you an assurance. And when you need it. So that assurance is given here. Atta chittam samadhatu. He already talked about mind and intellect. Now comes to chitta. Your memory, your consciousness. Equanimity to happen in your consciousness. 
is the third step. Nashaknosi maistiram. Then, without any doubt, that consciousness of yours, which is equanimous, will get established in me. Abhyasa yogi natato mamit chaptum dhananjaya. And with this practice, the yoga is called the chitta vritti nirodha. The modulation of consciousness, restraining the modulation of consciousness. And you practice this yoga, says Abhyase. Athachittam samadhatu nashaknosi maistiram. Abhyasa yoga natato mami chaptum dhananjaya. Then you will attain me. So, mind, intellect, and chitta. Again, chitta cannot be translated, it is a consciousness, the subconscious mind. Unconscious mind, the layers of superconscious mind, all this what we have deep within us, they for sure get the tranquility. In the tranquility, you feel connected. Many times on surface we feel we are not connected, but when we go deep in our subconscious mind, we are connected. Our subconscious mind rules our life more than our conscious mind. Do you know that? That's why whatever you think, intellectually you think, I want to do this, but you are drawn to something, because that seed is in the subconscious mind. Why people who are addicted suffer so much? Because though intellectually they know, they want to come out of it. But that seed has been filtered into the subconscious mind. In the chitta, so they are not able to get out of it. It is creating um, flutters there. There is ruffle there. So your concepts, your ideas have gone so deep in your subconscious mind and your subconscious mind rules you. And what happens whenever, and this is very interesting, you must pay attention to this. Whenever you face some failures, whenever you are scolded, whenever something happens, what is happening? All these failures, oh, I am not good, these things, some way percolates deep into the subconscious mind. And then you act from that space. You have many people saying you are wrong, you are wrong, you are wrong, and some way, or you are no good. It has entered your subconscious mind, and then the complex behavior that comes out of you is just a reflection. And intellectually you try so hard to get out of it, it doesn't happen. Suddenly you find everybody, others are egoistic. My dear, you have that inside egoism, somewhere deep inside. You project yourself. You know, whenever we project ourselves, it's not through the intellect, it is through the chitta, the subconscious mind. And there, there is always, like what we call in Hindi, halchal, turbulence. The turbulence in the subconscious mind is the issue. If you find someone walking very arrogantly, just know there is problem in the subconscious mind. Just that. You say hi and they don't say hi. Know that there is turbulence in the subconscious mind.
Casually you say, oh, look, I bought a new car. Just to inform your friend, and the person said, oh, I know you, don't show me off. Their answer shocks you. How many of you have this experience? You innocently say something, you invite them for a party and say, what the hell are you doing? Something like that. Something completely nonsensical or unexpected reaction from people that you experience. Even a very good gesture, you say, why don't you come have lunch with me? What do you think, I don't have that food in my home? <laughs> you think I can't afford my cup of tea? This shows that subconscious mind is in turbulence. That's where Lord Krishna says, Atachittam samadhato nashaknosi maistira. If you are connected with me, not only the conscious mind, but your subconscious mind will get impacted and you will find this yoga, this abhyasa or this practice unites you to the universal spirit. And you will attain me. When I am filled in your subconscious mind, for sure, you have attained the highest. But if you say the next one. Abhyase apya samartosi mat karma paramo bhava madartam api karmani kurvan siddhi mavapsyasi Suppose you say, no, I can't do this, I can't handle my subconscious mind, I can't do any practice, I cannot do yoga, I cannot do pranayama, I cannot do bastrika, I cannot do kriya. Lord Krishna says, never mind. <laughs> Abhyasi apya samartho. See, such a joy. <laughs> oh, who does all these boring practices? You have to do everyday practice and yoga. Patanjali says, Satu dirga kala nairantarya satkara sevito dridabhumi. When it is going to become really fructified, when you do it for a long time, he doesn't say how long. <laughs> Satu dirga kala, this has to be practiced long time with satkara sevito, with respect. Nairantarya, without gap. Only then you will find uh, success in it. It's not just one or two days gap. You know, on Sundays, it's not Sunday going to pray. It's an everyday thing. Sat Nairantarya, without gap you must do. Even the mantras you do, Japa, no, you should not do even one day gap, you said. One day gap means gone. It's like uh, you have left the tree which needs water every day. Those plants, you don't water for a couple of days, then it's no more there. You have to replant it. Like that, it, whether it is japa or any sadhana, any practice, it has to be continuously done. And with respect, not that, oh, how long I should do this, I am so bored of it. I am tired, I am sick and tired of doing this. Not like that. I know an elderly Swamiji was here. He was doing regularly puja, Shiva's puja worship. But one day he got so sick. He got diarrhea, he got fever. And he got this fit. Oh, what this Shiva, I every day is worshipping this Lord. God and he is not listening to me. He gave me this sickness. He said, I felt like throwing it all in the waste basket. <laughs> See, what has happened? A little bit of illness and disturbance. They say, no, I am done with it. I don't want to do any more sadhana, anything. Enough is enough. 
that type of frustration comes up. So because body is weak, you could not do. Because you are stuck in doing, for doing anything, body has to be part of it, mind has to be part of it, intellect has to be part of it, and body, mind, intellect, your conscious, unconscious, subconscious mind, everything is into, and it's so tiring. The thought of doing something is more tiring. That itself takes half of our energy out. We have not even begun doing something. This is a sign of old age. <laughs> Young people want to run up, you know, 40 kilometers per day. Young people want to climb Mount Everest. But old people, I want to do something easy, comfortable. Tell me, does the car take you to the doorstep? <laughs> then I'll come. Even here in the ashram, you see, to walk from here to, to dining hall, young people use shuttle more than old people. <laughs> I tell them, hey, young people should walk, run. Youngsters should not use the shuttle. But you know, easy when there is shuttle service happening, sit, you know. This is the mental tiredness and inability to do any practice. It can happen in any field. Practicing doctors get so tired. One doctor here was very good doctor from a very reputed hospital. He just wanted to leave everything and run away to Tirvannamalai and sit there, a pilgrimage place, and just sit there, do nothing. I told him, look, you don't have to do that. You are doing such good service. From you, so many people are getting benefit. Ha! Ah, every day you take some time and meditate. When we miss that, then this is what happens. Abhyase apya samartosi mat karma paramo bhava. If you cannot do practices, at least do my work. You know, many times people don't go for sadhana, but they go for seva. This is one category of people. There is another category of people who never go for any seva, any service activity, they will... They just want to sit and meditate. So Lord Krishna doesn't spare anybody. <laughs> He'll find something for everyone and cook them from there. Says abhyase apya samartho. Suppose you cannot, yeah, if you cannot practice this thing, mat karma paramava, do work for me. If you work for me, you will not feel tired. This is for sure. When we have big Mahasatsangs and there is a big volunteer group who have worked day and night for putting up big programs, we have got many programs which has been on the world record. And after all these programs, I asked them, the volunteer meter are full charged up. Are you not tired? He said, absolutely not. And you can't see any tiredness in their face. I know that, still I ask them, are you not tired? Just to hear from them, you know. <laughs> and in one voice they shout, they yell, no, we are ready to go ahead. You know, after the World Culture Festival, which was such a huge event, the very next day there was a volunteer meet. And I told them, you take one day of rest and then next day you can go do all the cleaning and other things. People said, no, we are not tired, we are going. Few weeks they have been working. And there is not a strain or not mm, a sign of strain or stress in their faces. So enthusiastic, so full of energy. Why they know they are not working for themselves or to gain something personally. They are doing for a cause. 
for a big cause for a divine cause for a mission when you work that itself uplifts you so here it says abhyase apya samartosi mat karma paramo bhava madartam api karmani kurvan siddhim avapyase even if you do if you do work for me you will attain siddhi you will attain perfection that a person is seeking to attain through practice there is a story about chhatrapati shivaji the emperor shivaji kept fighting all his life he fought and fought with the mughals with invaders with many other kings and he was so tired he was so tired and one day he went to his guru and he put his sword in front of him please forgive me i cannot fight anymore he kept his crown also now you told me we have to protect the culture the religion the tradition of this land so i have worked all this year now i cannot fight any more now you do whatever you want to do you put anyone as a king or emperor i am and that's it i'm done with it please don't tell me anything more so as samarth ramdas ji agreed said okay you are tired okay leave your throne your crown and your sword here okay i will take care of it you relax rest and as chhatrapati maharaj shivaji was leaving he called him back look now if i need something will you do something for me then chhatrapati said for you i'll do anything you want me to give my head now i'll give you for you i'll do anything see that is the love that is a connection that here i'll do anything for you then he said come i am the king but you work for me <laughs> so he placed the crown back on him know that i am the ruler of the place but you are now my soldier as a soldier you work it it is said in the history from then on shivaji got so much more energy so much more power he could do much better than what he would do he, he was doing earlier because no that ego was no longer there i am doing for myself now he is doing for swami samarth ramdas for his guru so it is said from then on he did not lose even a single fight single war so here lord krishna is saying same thing to arjuna madartam api karmani kurvan siddhim avapyasi remember you are working for me your actions are for me not for yourself now comes more interesting one अथैतदप्यशक्तोसी कर्तुं मद्योगमाश्रितः सर्वकर्मपलत्यागं ततः कुरुयतात्मवान्